In spring of 2022, Tesla billionaire and boy genius Elon Musk announced he was interested in buying Twitter. A mere three days later, the Biden administration unveiled a new disinformation governance board at the Department of Homeland Security. Coincidence? Twitter has been instrumental in censoring the New York Post's coverage of Hunter Biden's embarrassing laptop. The Post's expose detailed thousands of emails that suggested the younger Biden had been leveraging his daddy's name for what the Post called a series of eyebrow-raising overseas business deals. Twitter unilaterally decided the Post's story was wrong and suspended the Post's account. They also disallowed sharing of the story between users, cementing what many users had long suspected Twitter leaned left and would clamp down on information that failed to suit their preferred narratives, a practice known as viewpoint discrimination. Twitter isn't alone in this campaign against so-called disinformation. Former President Barack Obama gave a speech at Stanford in April 2022 that leaned heavily on a report from the Aspen Institute, a left-leaning think tank. In his speech, Obama claimed that unfettered online speech threatens democracy. The former president painted a very frightening picture of what our Constitution calls free speech. Introducing Obama's speech was none other than Tiana Epps Johnson, a Stanford alum and Obama Foundation fellow who is also the founder and executive director of the Center for Tech and Civic Life, the same nonprofit that took in hundreds of millions in funding from one Mark Zuckerberg to help fortify the 2020 election. What's more, the Aspen Institute's Disinformation Commission, from which Obama pulled some of his themes, includes Twitter head of site integrity Yoel Roth, the same person responsible for blocking access to the Post's article on Hunter Biden. But Twitter's censorship of a highly consequential, fact-based news story is not the only way they've gone woke. According to Vivek Ramaswamy and Jed Rubenfield writing in The Wall Street Journal, Conservative opinions about transgenderism are censored as attacks on a protected group. And conservative views on COVID are flagged as misinformation. Twitter also removed President Trump's May 2020 tweet on violent protests that summer, which stated, when the looting starts, the shooting starts, calling it a glorification of violence. Twitter later removed President Trump's entire account, but the disinformation czars at Twitter corporate ignored Iran's Ayatollah Ali Khamenei's tweets calling for the destruction of Israel and Colin Kaepernick's tweets supporting the burning of police stations. Users who claim the 2020 election was stolen will find themselves censored, but similar claims about malfeasance perpetrated by Russia in the 2016 election go untouched. Most recently, current Twitter employees have accused Musk of wanting to harm the trans community because Musk made light of pronouns in Twitter bios, calling them an aesthetic nightmare. And a Project Veritas undercover expose revealed one Twitter employee who claimed that Twitter employees are commies and that they only censor conservative speech. The question of whether Twitter engages in viewpoint discrimination has been taken up by academics with interesting results. A study by professors at MIT and Yale called Is Twitter Biased Against Conservatives? The Challenge of Inferring Political Bias in a Hyperpartisan Media Ecosystem concluded that there is an extreme disparity between suspended users based on party. 7.7% of Democrats compared to 35.6% of Republicans whose accounts were studied. While the Federal Disinformation Governance Board was officially put on hold a mere three weeks after its announcement, expect the left to continue to try to define, with the help of their friends in tech, exactly what disinformation means. <laughs>